it has a bunch of different endpoints on it. But specifically here, we have motsmonkeys.azurewebsites.net. So this is my current backend that's out there today. It has a bunch of different APIs. So we have one for monkey and we have one for continents, for example. I even have weather forecast because you got to have the weather forecast. But here I can send the request out and this lives up on Azure today. I'm going to take down this API by the time I publish this video, but it'll go off and it will go and grab a bunch of monkeys. And then there's, of course, you know, posting content, deleting content, things like that. So here I could say, just give me monkey two, for example, or give me my continents here. Now, if I go in to another HTTP file, we can see that I'm doing things like, you know, here's my post specifically of different JSON data, because if I go into my endpoints, it's exposing everything. So I have gets, I have puts, I have posts, I have deletes, I have everything here for not only my monkeys, but also for my continents. So here I'm doing with both minimal APIs and control APIs, but all the same, I have everything here. So just a backend that's on here. Now, if I was creating a BFF for mobile, I might want to just slice some of this. So for example, inside of my um, mobile app, I might only have APIs to get the data and not actually to do um, specific things like posting or deleting data or things like that on top of it. So I might want to have a little bit more control over it. And we can see specifically that each of these APIs are with slash API slash monkey, API slash monkey two, API slash continents, for example. And I might not want that to be my API endpoint for my mobile application. So a lot of things that I can do inside of there. So let's create our first reverse proxy. I'm gonna go in and you can do this via the command line or you can go into Visual Studio or VS Code and add a new project. And the one specifically that we're looking for, if I go to web, is the blank empty application. That's going to be the easiest one uh, that we can create. So ASP.NET Core empty. And specifically, if you're using the command line, that'd be .NET new web, for example. So I'm just going to say next. And I'm going to say monkey proxy here. So I'm just going to create that. And this is going to be a super blank, basically, ASP.NET Core web app. So nothing really special going on here. Uh, and I'm pretty sure if I just run it, it says like, hello world, and that's about it, which we don't even need for this application. So let's go ahead and get it created here. Okay, so our project is created. So let me just go ahead and open the solution explorer. We're gonna do all of our work inside of the monkey proxy. So let's go ahead and close all these tabs. And we'll see here, we just have a program file that simply says, hello world, and that's it, and runs the application. If we go into the app settings, we have just some simple logging going on here. So the first thing we're gonna do is add a NuGet package. So I'm gonna say um, manage NuGet packages. And we're gonna to want to specifically add, if I browse over here, uh, is Yarp. So I'm just gonna type in Yarp and we'll see yarp.reverse proxy. Yes, with 8.91 million downloads. So I'm just gonna go ahead and install that into my application. Here we go, perfect. Awesome. Now, Yarp supports a bunch of different versions of .NET, but I'm going to run it here on .NET 8. So if I open up the uh, monkey proxy, I've .NET 8 here, I'm good to go. Now, if you are doing this in the command line, you can run the command line to install that or just add this package reference, and that's all you need to do. So now what I'm going to do is come over and set up my application. So here, we don't need to do much. So we uh, have our builder, which is totally fine, and we don't need our map get. So let's go ahead and delete that. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're going to say builder.services and we're going to add reverse proxy. All right. The other thing we need to do is load from config. So you can have a configuration inside of your app settings or you can have it in code. It's up to you. I'm going to do it inside the app settings uh, because I just prefer that sort of setup. But here we can go ahead and load it. So I'm going to say builder dot configuration dot get section and we'll see this here in a second but i'm just going to call it reverse proxy and you can call it whatever you want uh, you might have multiple or things like that i'm just going to do that we're going to build up our app and i'm going to say app dot map reverse proxy and what that's going to do is take our reverse proxy configuration and then it is going to go ahead and map it out automatically and the whole idea of a reverse proxy is it has a URL coming into the proxy and it reroutes the traffic accordingly. 
Uh, what's great about that is you can rate limit those things, you can load balance those things, you can transform that data, and that's what we're gonna go ahead and take a look at today. So let's go into our app settings over here, and we're just gonna start mapping out our reverse proxy. So I'm gonna go ahead and give it a new node, call it reverse proxy, there we go. And then what I'm gonna do is create a list of routes. And the routes specifically are items that are monitoring in the reverse proxy. So if this is running on myproxy.com, it's whatever I would type into like slash monkeys. And where do I want to route that traffic? So here I'm going to create my first route. I'm just going to call it route one, for example. And route one, let's just make it super duper easy. We're going to go ahead and say, we're gonna match anything. So just route all traffic that comes in to a specific destination. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a cluster ID. Now all this is documented, so you can go ahead and pull that up, but I'm just gonna call this cluster one, for example. And the whole idea here is that you want to cluster together a bunch of different routes to route them to a destination. So anything, I can have multiple routes in this cluster, and then I can say, hey, all those routes in cluster one route them to this specific destination. So here's what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say, okay, we're in cluster one, let's go ahead and do a match. And we can match on a bunch of different things, but I'm gonna match on a path that comes in to my application. So I'm gonna say path here, and we can do a catch-all. So that looks a little bit like this, with the two stars to do catch-all. So in this instance, we're gonna say, hey, anything that comes in to my reverse proxy, catch everything, and let's go ahead and route it. So we can go down to our routes, uh, under our routes, and we can say clusters. And this is where we're gonna, for all intents and purposes, define our destinations. So we're gonna define cluster one here because we specified cluster one up here. Again, we could have multiple clusters. And here I'm gonna say, um, destinations and you can have multiple destinations which I'll talk about here in a little bit but what that would enable you to do is to do load balancing for example but we're just gonna say let's have one destination here so I say destination one and now we're gonna tell it where to go so we have cluster one destinations destination one and we're gonna give it an address here and specifically we're gonna go and pull our monkey configuration file that we have for HTTP. Here we go. And I'm just gonna copy that over here and just do slash. There we go. Perfect. So now what this is gonna do is take everything from this path and it's gonna route it directly to this address. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set the proxy as the startup. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and run it just like that. So again, this is gonna catch everything into our reverse proxy and then reroute it into our address down below. Okay, so if I pull this over, we can see this is running on localhost 7172. So what this would allow me to do is take that URL, and of course I could say slash API slash monkey, and now what this will do is it will reroute it over here to my backend that's running, right? So this is my local host that's running locally. Like I'm not even running my backend because it's hitting my API that's running on Azure. So if I come into my monkey app over here and I replace this URL with this local host, I can now send that request directly from the HTTP file and we'll see that this is hitting everything that's coming in from Azure. So I could go ahead and get monkey two, for example, there's monkey two, I could get continents, there's my continents, everything that I want right there. So I've just created the world's simplest reverse proxy, basically saying, hey, this thing was running on motsmonkeys.azurewebsites.net. Now, as I deploy this to Azure, this could be my mobile monkey bff.azurewebsites.net and reroute the traffic there, which is really, really cool. All right, now that's one example of just rerouting all the traffic, but maybe we don't actually reroute all the traffic. Maybe we want to just expose a limited subset of APIs and we can totally do that. Okay, so what we want to do is replace this catch all. Now, at this point, I sort of like to remove this slash over here, in my opinion. I just like to keep all the slashes here. 
and do API slash monkey, for example. And that would give me my monkey API over here. You could, of course, just remove this and put the slash here. I think that would all work the same. But I like to keep it like this. I keep the slashes inside the path so I know what's going on there. So what we're going to do is only expose that one API monkey. Now, what that means is that the other APIs aren't going to be exposed. So things like continents, like I said, which is another API, isn't going to match this path. So it's not going to match slash API slash monkey, which means it won't go through our reverse proxy at all, which is kind of what we want at the end of the day. Okay, so uh, we're up and running again here. So here's the 7172. If I go over here, we can see that we still have this up and running. We have our slash API slash monkey. If I send the request, this is going to go off and send it over and we get our monkeys. If I do send request for monkey two, we get a 404 not found because we did not specifically specify that anything beyond the, the specific path here of monkey being here. Same thing true if I go to continents, that's now not going to go through either. Now there's a lot more configuration that we could do. So for example, we could go ahead and do a catch all after monkey. So we could do a slash, you know, catch all here, for example. That would be another thing that we could do. Or we could expose just a specific API to allow specific monkeys to be found. So let's go ahead and just add route two inside of here. So here I'm just gonna go in and add route two. There we go. And here we're going to say slash, and then I'm just going to say ID. So now we're going to expose not only getting the API monkey, but also a specific monkey as well. So let's go ahead and run this again. And this time we still won't expose our specific uh, continents, but we will go ahead and create this specific monkey API, which is super duper nice. All right, again, it's up and running. Awesome. Let's go back over here, send the request. So again, we have all of our monkeys. And now when I request monkey two, it's going to pass that across the board. And again, if I do continents, no continents either. Now at this point, we might be thinking to ourselves, well, we are sort of creating um, a specific monkey cluster over here. So we have route one, route two. So here we might say, you know, monkey, uh, you know, monkeys, for example, as our cluster ID. So here we have our monkeys. We'll do it here and we'll go ahead and do monkeys. Now at the same time, we could also do another route and this route could be, for example, the continents. So I might put that into a continents over here and go ahead and replace this here. And we'll go ahead and say like continents route one, for example. Now this will be in a different cluster, so it's not gonna be in this specific monkey cluster. So we would wanna go ahead and create a continents cluster. So there we go. Now, this is where if you're doing microservice based sort of technology that this is going to work really, really good, right? Because you could reroute all of your API traffic for monkeys and continents accordingly into different backends. All right. And that's super duper nice. Now, in this case, I don't have a continents right here. I just have a specific one backend here. But you can imagine these are two different URLs that are going on. So now we will expose these three endpoints over here. So if I go ahead and set this up again, what we'll see is that we have our specific monkey and monkey API and continents. And again, these can be running on separate servers, which I think is super awesome when it comes into doing something like this. So let's go ahead and let this boot up a second here. All right, we're back up. Let's go ahead and open this up. I'm gonna send the request for continents. And sure enough, we get our continents back, we get our monkeys back, we get our other full list of monkeys back, we get everything that we want, which is awesome. All right, now one thing when I'm building out a mobile backend basically is sort of being able to rewrite URLs, and that's something that's super common. You may not want all of your APIs to be slash API, slash whatever, going out back and forth to it. You might want it to be simply slash monkeys, for example, or slash monkey API, or slash mobile, and that might be the URL that you wanna create. The cool thing with Yarp is it's highly customizable, which means you can add or remove basically the URLs that are coming in into it, which is really, really cool. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. Okay, so for this, these are what we call transforms. And there's a lot of different transforms that you can do with Yarp. The ones that I wanna talk about today 
are ones that sort of modify the URL where you can either add or remove prefixes. So for example, let's say we wanted to change the incoming URL of this to be something that's not slash API slash monkey. Maybe we just want this to be slash monkey, for example. Well, what the reverse proxy is going to do is take that route and then pass it down over here to the Mods Monkeys API URL. So this won't work because the slash API is mixing, missing. So what we'll need to do is add a transformation. And you can have multiple transformations by adding transform transforms in here and uh, adding an array. So I'm going to add an array. And what we're going to add is a path prefix. So this will be appended onto the front as this comes in. So I'm going to say slash API. So now when this comes in slash monkey, it will transform it by adding slash API. We could of course also change this, for example, for the continents one, and maybe we want to create all of our APIs to be slash mobile BFF, for example. So we want all of the APIs for the mobile BFF to be inside of this specific one. But again, we don't want to pass that slash mobile BFF to our destination. So what we would end up doing is adding another transforms in here and then do a uh, specific path remove prefix. Okay. And in this case, what we're going to do is say slash mobile BFF. So here we can go ahead and run this. And what this will do is not only add the prefix, but also remove the prefix before passing it down the chain over here into my clusters. All right. So my back end is spun up again. Perfect. If I go back into my monkey API, if I go ahead and send the request for slash API slash monkey, we're going to see that it fails. Now note here, when I call monkey two, that one is going to succeed because if we go back into our app settings, we can see that I didn't change that one at all. Now what's cool is if I go ahead and remove slash API and it's just slash monkey and send that request. Now this is going to go through a hundred percent, which is super cool. Same thing over here for the API continents. When I run that not found, but if I type in mobile BFF slash, I can go ahead and hit send. And now this will go ahead and send it across. So we get that automatically, which is great, which is really, really nice. And same thing here. If I go ahead and do the slash mobile BFF over here and send that across to get the continents back. Now we get two of them back, which is super awesome. And I just love being able to see that come in with the simple transforms that are being set up. Now, the last thing I want to talk about is load balancing. And now this is something I mentioned earlier, and it's just one of many features that are built directly into Yarp that enable you to route traffic according to how much traffic is coming in and balance out your load across multiple services, uh, which makes it super simple when you're using Yarp. So let's go ahead and check it out. Now, the nice thing is that when you actually called add reverse, add reverse proxy and map reverse proxies, under the hood, these automatically added load balancing in. Now, of course, I haven't done anything automatically, uh, but specifically we can map different clusters to have different load balancing policies. So here, for example, where we only have one destination, well, we really can't do any load balancing, but let's say, for example, I created two destinations. So here under destinations, I don't I only have my first destination, but I'd have destination two here. And I would maybe deploy this to Mots Monkeys 2, for example. So I'd have two instances up here. Now, what's great here is that instead of routing all of my traffic into a single backend service, we could route this accordingly to different places. Now, by default, this is going to use the power of two choices automatically. And what that does is it will select two random destinations and select one of them with the least assigned requests. So that avoids the overhead specifically. Now there are things like random first alphabetical, a least requests. And one of the other ones is like round Robin. So if you wanted to do a custom policy that's built in, 
onto your cluster, all you have to do above your destination is say load balancing policy. There we go. And then say round robin. And just like that, whenever any request comes in to this cluster, it will do load balancing automatically via round robin. Of course, I could put this back to power of two choices and that would automatically figure it out. So you'd have multiple, multiple things going on right there. Now, of course, I don't have two backends up and running, so I can't really show you that off and all that stuff, but rest assured the load balancing works as expected, which is super duper cool. Now, when you wanna get started with Yarp, there's great documentation that shows off all the different features. So I'll put a link to the Yarp documentation, but here's just the quick overview here. When you click on articles, this will dive into all of the different items. So if you are interested in rate limiting, for example, you can see that you can use the default rate limiter, or you can go ahead and create custom rate limiter policies here. And then you can set up different fixed windows limiters and a lot more. You can take a look at timeouts, for example, and how to configure those, AB testing, HTTP3 support, gRPC support, middleware support, session affinity, cross-origin requests, authentication authorization, header routing, and so much more. There are just so many great features built into here. So if you are looking for a reverse proxy, Yarp is your reverse proxy. There is so much amazingness packed into this thing, and it's so easy to get started. Hope that you enjoyed this walkthrough of all things Yarp. And there's just so much more that you can pack in here, but this hopefully gave you an introduction uh, to Yarp. I just recently started using it directly in the eShop application, uh, which is a reference sample app for .NET Aspire and um, more that we talked about at .NET Conf last year. So I'll put a link to the show notes down there as well. And specifically what came up was creating that mobile BFF for the eShop itself. So you want to take a look at that. I'll put it down in the show notes. So definitely take a look at that. If you enjoy this content at all, let me know what you think. Um, if you are building mobile applications, I think Yarp is a great way to create that reverse proxy, but there's so many more use cases out there that hopefully you picked out something here of interest. Um, and let me know if you are using Yarp, put a comment below. I super appreciate that. Of course, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and of course, jam the subscribe button. If you want more of this mustache, let me know as well. But probably until next time, you won't see it again for a long, long time. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a